So obviously if you've got this, you're somehow connected to the partnership and you are aware that we have a lot of resources available through our network. This today is brought to you by the Learning Community, a program of the partnership and a grant from the Office of Community Services at ACS through Health and Human Services. So we are really glad that you made it there with us today. Uh, folks are still joining us. We have folks from all over the country, so that's great. We'll look forward to hearing your commentary and any thoughts you have on the resources that we're going to be showcasing. As you know, we like to start all of our meetings, and whether it's board meetings or staff meetings, webinars or conference sessions with the promise of community action. Amy, would you like to do that? And I'll ask you all to join us in reading it at your desks. Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Lil. So community action changes people's changes lives, people's lives. Embodies, embodies the, the spirit of hope, hope. improves Improve communities, communities and makes America a better place to live. We care about the entire community, and we are dedicated to helping people help themselves and each other. Thanks, Amy. The promise is more than just a saying for us, though. It is really the heart and soul of who we are as a community action network, and the heart and soul of who we are in the Learning Communities Resource Center. Our purpose, as you can see on the slide, is to analyze our outcomes and identify effective promising and innovative practice models that alleviate the causes and conditions of poverty. The reason that we exist is to help build your capacity to fight poverty at the state and local level. Moving us through. Uh, you can see here a picture of our staff and up. Oh, this one didn't get the updated slide. We had Amy's new picture. Amy, my apologies. We'll get that taken care of. We are led by Director of Practice Transformation, Tiffany Marley. And you can see on our staff, most of you know Zandi McKinley, I'm Lil Dupree, Courtney Kohler, Liza Porras also on today, Kevin Kelly, and with us, um, and we'll get that picture changed, Amy Robert. So today's discussion, we're going to frame it in the following bullets. Who are we as a network? Um, what does poverty look like today? What programs and services do we offer? How can the partnership actually help you in your work? Specifically, what tools and resources can we offer? And we want to talk very specifically about Community Action Academy. I hope that many of you are familiar with it, but it is still a relatively new tool for us. And we want to be sure that all folks who um, in the network know that it's available to them for free, unlimited numbers of people at your agency. There's no cap on how many folks you can have engaged with this tool. With that, I'd like to take a second and let you read this on the screen. Some of you may have seen this in our materials or on our website. The partnership believes we don't just have the promise, we have a vision, a mission, and values as well that encapsulate and really focus us on the work that we do. Our vision is the same as many of yours. It's a nation that creates opportunities for all people to thrive, right? It builds strong, resilient communities and ensures a more equitable society. We're going to talk a little bit more about equity here in a second. Our mission, specifically as an association, as your membership association, is to ensure that the causes and, and conditions of poverty are effectively addressed. That's where those tools and resources come in. And we want to strengthen, promote, represent, and serve you. So we thought it was a good time, a lot of new resources that have been coming online for us, to hold a webinar simply to showcase all that we've got for you and steer you to it, particularly since we've had a website redo in the last several months and things may or may not be exactly where you're used to seeing them. Our values, you can hear on the screen and I will not read these to you, but the key is we believe. We believe these things to be true and we pledge that we will create an environment that pursues innovation and excellence through partnering, through looking inside and outside our network, across sectors, and partnering and collaborating. Many of the tools we're going to show you were created in partnership with other entities. We can't all do it alone. And I know we all say this, but there's no need to reinvent the wheel. If someone else is doing excellent work in a space, let's get them to help us bring that to our network. Our Community Action Network, most of you know this, we have a, over a thousand agencies that are like us. Um, looks like a fair number of them are on board today. We have over 50 people with us, so thank you very much. 
We have 44 state associations, over 50 state CSBG offices. We've got national partners. We serve millions and millions of people. As you know, we serve rural America. We serve urban America. We serve suburban America. Many CAP agencies serve portions of all of those within one agency. We are not nonpartisan. As David Bradley says, we are bipartisan. We are in red states, blue states, purple states, all sides of the aisle. The one thing we all agree on is making a difference for people at the local level with services, programs, projects, and initiatives that address the causes and the effects of poverty, working on both, helping people to opportunity. This is what I meant when I said about equity. It's a quote from Brian Stevenson. Many of you have seen it. The opposite of poverty isn't wealth. The opposite of poverty is justice. Making that opportunity for folks and having people have a just society. It's very important to the work that we do. As you know from your work in the field, poverty today is all over the universe of conditions that we live in. Yes, it's about income, but it's not just about money, even when you consider wealth. It's about racial inequities. It's about disparities in education, health care, affordable housing, the fact that we are an aging society, the, the birth rate is plummeting like a rock, the opioid epidemic, which affects every community in our network to one degree or another, but no one is unaffected by that. Poverty today is a very complex issue. It's never been simple, but it's been getting more complex in the information age and as these disparities and inequities have risen. The charter and charge of the partnership is to help you with tools to work through this and to continue to um, move that forward. I don't see any questions. I was just checking a light up on mine, but if you do have questions on content, please remember you have the chat button. If you just want to make a comment as opposed to a question, that's fine. And then the Q&A, please use for your technical questions. All right, moving forward. Why we do the work, I touched on this in the last slide. We believe, all of us, that everybody should have an opportunity for success. Nobody should have the door closed to them for opportunities. It is our job to see that those doors are opened, stay open, or if necessary, are bludgeoned open so that everybody has an opportunity. I hope that everybody has seen this. Uh, yes, we will. you will have a copy. The slideshow will be saved in the webinar Wednesday files, as well as the recording of this webinar. So no, you do not need to take notes unless you're so moved. Uh, so the Community Action National Impact Report came out this year. It's 2019. It's very current. This is an effort by the partnership to encapsulate the kinds of impacts we have nationally. It's different from the CSBG annual report um, in that it is focused on the impacts across the network. Here are some screenshots from it. Look at these numbers and please, with pride, I hope, because you are part of this. It's a national need, but our reach and our annual impact that you see here, four million families reduced or eliminated barriers to stability. We served over 6.2 million, 246,000 parents increased family functioning skills. More than 500, almost half of our agencies provide Head Start or Early Head Start. We're a nation, we are a network with incredible reach and this report demonstrates that you can get it on our website. Please feel free to reproduce it, to use it, to use these statistics in the work that you do when you're talking in your communities about being part of a bigger network. Again, inside pages from the report showing our reach and our impact. So here's a quick did you know, and we're going to step through a few of these. Do you know about all these things the partnership does? Many of you know of our Certified Community Action Professional Program. Uh, here coming up in June, we'll have the examination for this year's candidates. It's a robust and vibrant program. I'm going to show you some spaces on the website later. There's a lot of information and a lot of help. Community economic development, we've been working in this arena for years. We are chartered to work on the causes and the effects of poverty, which also involves working at the community level to economically move communities forward. Lots of resources there. Partnerships with Energy. We're happy to welcome Catherine Maddox, formerly of OCS, to our energy team um, and looking at how we can partner and help do more and support the work that you all do in the realm of energy. 
racial equity, as opposed to being an actual program, though it is, what we're trying to do, as with many things like standards, is we weave this into all the work that we do. Racial equity in and of itself shouldn't be a separate program. It should be woven along with justice into all of our work. So Tiffany Marligan is leading the charge on practice transformation, and we are trying to make this a part of everything we do. Uh, recently had some webinars, and we'll be having more on othering and belonging. Uh, John Powell's going to be at our conference. We look forward to continuing work in this especially important realm for social justice. The Organizational Standards Center of Excellence. Uh, you're all familiar, I'm sure, with the org standards. We actually have an entire center and dedicated staff ready to help. We have a tremendous number of tools. Again, we're going to show you some of these and where to find them to help you meet and hopefully exceed the standards. The Learning Communities Resource Center, that's the team bringing you this webinar today, as well as a lot of other pieces um, to help you in your work. We also run the learning community groups. Each year we run three to four specific small groups, agencies, um, five to about ten I think at the moment, who are working diligently and deeply around a specific topic. This year it's health intersections, community level work and collective impact, uh, implementing innovative practices and two gen whole family approaches in our community of practice. Um, we will be uh, looking at doing this again next year, so please be looking at the call for agencies. Coming back over, we have a new project, Census 2020. Uh, Liza and I are actually also spending some professional time on this. It's critically important that Community Action be a good partner in helping get the census out. I've got a couple of slides on this. We had a webinar um, just, I believe, last week launching this. We will be having a lot more. You'll be hearing a great deal in this space about the critical nature of getting all of our customers, our clients, all the people we work with to trust that the census is safe and is necessary for them to fill out. And then, of course, one of our flagship programs as well, Pathways to Excellence. This is helping agencies go with due regard to Mr. Jim Collins from good to great, helping them climb that ladder from being good enough to being better, to striving to reaching for, uh, forward as an agency, organizationally to improve your practices, um, which leads to better services. A number of agencies have gone through the Pathways program, and many have even gone and reached and won the award for excellence. So it's a vibrant program. This is just a quick shot of our home page, and you can see here that if you click on programs and initiatives, you get this incredible drop down here of many things. This is a static shot. We will be bringing up the live website here in a moment. All right, making sure I have that ready for you. So our CCAP webpage, this is just and again, a couple of examples um, that we are wanting to bring forward and show you. And this is a graduating CCAP class, I believe from last year. Uh, the photo is undated. But folks graduate, this is an incredible professional designation. It is not a simple process, but it is straightforward in that you do an application that highlights your experience. If that's approved, you do an executive skills portfolio. And if that's approved, you sit for the examination, which is given once a year in June. As a CCAP myself, I can tell you that it's worthwhile. It changes our lives um, as we go through it. I don't know anyone who has not been changed, re-energized, and felt that their commitment to community action was strengthened and frankly showcased by this great credential. So here is our own learning community resource. Again, if you click on programs initiatives, you see learning communities will pop down. And I got this screenshot webinar Wednesdays. One of our initiatives is that we have some kind of content for you every Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern. Um, the, the subjects range all over the community action map. Everything from economic development to the census, from tools and resources, pathways to excellence, to any kind of subject matter. If you have other suggestions um, for webinars that you'd like to see, please feel free to shoot any of us an email. We're very easy to reach and there's contact information on the last slides but it's first initial last name at communityactionpartnership.com. And you can also feel free to type it in your chat window. This is our new census counts page and kudos to Liza Porras for pulling this together. We have a wealth of resources here as well for you to see. So again, these are just some samples. We're gonna walk you through some of the other pages during our hour together. Tools and resources, as I mentioned. This is where I want to take you to the live one. So 
Let me try sharing my application. And Amy, I'm going to ask you to unmute and be able to confirm for me that everyone can see my Google page because it changes on my screen. It looks good. All right, grand. So as you can see here, when you click on home is just, of course, a home page. About Us talks about who we are. If you are interested in using our vision mission to develop uh, some values of your own, you can find those things right here. Of course, along with the promise, which we hope you already have there. As well, the code of ethics for community action. And while this is part of being a CCAP, it is also part of being in community action. And it's on the test. Our impact is the impact report that we mentioned. And here it is. And you can download the fact sheet, national highlights, or the entire national report. You can see our strategic plan. If you have one at your agency, I would encourage you to post it on your website. Certainly part of excellence is communicating that to your community. But here, in fact, is our strategic plan. So you can read all about our, our, uh, our plans for the future. You can see our staff. And it's an easy way to contact us as well. Um, led, of course, by our CEO, uh, Denise Harlow, who is both a CCAP and a National Roma trainer, and whose photo is loading slowly today. And then you can see the rest of our team as we are moving forward. And we have got Amy uh, here uh, on this page. Lindsay Marsh here is another new associate leading our census project. Catherine Maddox leading our energy program. Alexa Hayes is a new associate working with events, programs, and administration. You'll see her name a lot with our national conference. Johnny does communications. Charity helps keep us all in line. Tiffany Marley, I've already said, runs a learning community, but is the director of practice transformation. Liza, like me, works on several different programs. Uh, Jovita Tolbert is our dedicated deputy director. Saranda Watkins, who many of you have known, she's been with us for a long time, is the coordinator for member services. Zandi McKinley is a senior associate for learning and dissemination. Kevin Kelly is our economic development director. Jarl Crocker leads the training and technical assistance arm and the organizational standards of excellence, ably assisted by Courtney Kohler. Many of us work on multiple projects, so we really do believe in a no wrong door approach to how we, um, how we do technical assistance, how we answer questions. Feel free to contact any of us. Our board member, of course, is also board members are listed, as are our partners. I'd like to show you this. Here are our four national partners, three other national partners, of course, but you can also find a whole list of other nonprofits that we partner with. Just like you all in the CSPG report where you have to list your partners, we believe we should list our partners too. So they are here on our website. Okay. How to contact us and what all we disclose. Membership, there's all sorts of membership information. We do do membership webinars and there are some recorded, so I'm not going to step through this uh, piece by piece. But anything you could need about membership, branding, Huggy Heart logos that you can download, everything um, that you could wish is in there. Finding a community action agency. This is a great tool on our website and how to find an agency, how to find your state association, who are the contacts for your state CSBG office, and then contact contacting people. I'll just show you the map very briefly because I want to spend time on events and our programs and tools. So for instance, I work remotely in Bristol, Virginia, and you can see by that there is my uh, map. And if I'm going to search within 50 miles, it tells me the People Incorporated of Virginia is the service area that I live in. It also says, well, if you're looking within that area, Upper East Tennessee Human Development and Appalachian Community Action and Development Agency, along with Mountain Cap up in Marion and Whammy. So this is a terrific way for people to find their own um, association. Well, I'm not sure about everyone else, but I'm not able to see the map currently. Ah. Oh, there it goes. Now we can see it. All right. Uh, there was a background message. Thank you very much. Please continue to keep me updated on what you can see. Sure. All right. So events. This is a tab that I hope you'll go to fairly frequently, although probably not as frequently as programs and initiatives. Um, events talks about the whole calendar for community action. 
and we'll showcase everything that we have going on. So, oh look, today on Wednesday there's a webinar for Resource Roundup. Next week it's an introduction to creating a social enterprise. There's a special webinar on the 14th, Community Action History 101. We've got the CAP Law Training Conference. I hope we'll see many of you there. I'll be there as well. Um, so you can find all sorts of events, of course, on the calendar. Community Action Month, and we have a couple of slides. I know May is behind us, but we always have a lot of resources available to you. I've heard some really nice discussion in the field from folks who found it a really useful toolkit because it's full of social media things and hashtags that you can just lift um, graphics you can lift and just plug into your own campaign so that you don't have to develop it. So that's always helpful. Immigration Summit was uh, a recent summit that we held down in Texas. Lots of information there. Of course, the 2019 annual convention information is coming up. And you'll see that. Management and Leadership Conference um, has the past conferences. The next one will be in January of 2020. And we'll have information on that up shortly. And then upcoming webinars. This is where you can find and register for more webinars. So if you want to find out more about any one of these, Community Action, Beyond the Standard, Continuous Quality Improvement. I'm going to say that's Jeannie Chaffin. Many of you know her, and that will be a terrific one. And then Missouri is going to host one with us, Transforming Perspectives Through the Community Action Poverty Simulation. So very exciting. And learn about FIRST Nonprofit. We're going to be doing one soon on um, rural transportation, working with the National Rural Transportation Alliance. So always topical. Some are more interesting to some folks than others. But please check here often because these webinars are free to you. They are recorded. They're great for ongoing learning for your teams and for staff. They don't involve any travel or any cost of any kind, just an hour to an hour and a half of your time. With that, I want to show you a few of the program pages. Amy, while I'm in this screen sharing mode, I cannot see questions popping up. So if there are any, please jump in and just relay for me if you'd be so kind. Okay, sure. I will let you know. Thank you. So Kathy is the Community Action Financial Institution. It is actually an affiliate of the partnership. It was created to promote financing solutions for CAAs. If you are working in a community economic development project, you're going to want to contact Kevin Kelly, let him know what you're doing, and discuss how Kathy might be able at different points to be an economic partner uh, with your event. CCAP I've already touched on, but I do want to show you the page. Um, so last year was the 25th anniversary of that program. There's a touching video testimonial here. For those of you who are CCAPs, get your handkerchiefs ready. It is um, touching with a lot of our elder states people um, talking through their experiences. So this talks about how it's administered, who is certification for, how does it benefit you and your agency. Things, different, uh, very technical questions, along with all the materials on how to become a CCAP, the exam study guide, webinars. You're not alone at any point in that process. So I encourage you to consider it. If you have questions, please feel free to use the contact us there or contact me personally as a CCAP. Happy to talk to you about it. This next is actually our Community Economic Development Program, which offers tremendous resources. There's a profile booklet here that you can see, Creating a Successful Job Project Toolkit. You're going to find this also in Tools and Resources, but we like to highlight things on the program pages. An FAQ. Long dis uh, discussions, recorded uh, pieces. If you are involved in economic development or if you are thinking about this, this is a per perfect place to begin your journey on that. Um, as you can see, they range from simple to very complex topics, as is economic development across the board. So we have a wealth of resources available for you. Census 2020, I want to touch on briefly. Liza, I don't know if you are available to unmute, if you would like to take the baton for a moment on this. But I didn't tell her ahead of time, so I don't want to put you on the spot. Oh, that's, that's, that's fine. Um, can you hear me? I can. OK, great. Um, well, this page is um, a continuing work in progress, but it's just a, a landing page to talk a little bit about how the partnership is going to be working on the 2020 census. We've been very involved. Um, in past census 
since I, <laughs> um, uh, making sure that everybody gets counted. So we've got um, our featured resources at the top, of those resources that we've um, curated to this point that we think are most helpful for community action agencies now to begin um, working in their communities. So those will be at the top, and also um, we've um, at the top right above the resources we have anchor links to the various um, points in the page that give you a little bit more information about the components of the work that we do. So uh, we've got a little bit of information about the Census 2020 from the Census Bureau, um, that's below the um, featured resources. Um, then as uh, well, it's going down. After that, um, we've got what we are as a partnership, but we are a member of the Census Counts 2020 campaign, and that is a national coordinated campaign with a number of um, national partners uh, working to make sure that the various part accounts are, uh, are counted in the 2020 census. So we're really uh, proud to be a part of that team. And we've got those those different organizations featured there. You can take a look at all of their websites. They have a lot of resources um, particular to getting out the count for those particular groups. And then right below that, we just have some information that um, about our involvement and our plans for um, the our community actions efforts um, through 2020. And just some quick um, suggestions of what community action agencies can do down can do now. And then we also have um, we are going to be continually updating everybody with the the newest um, details from our efforts and, and what community action agencies can do um, with the census campaign. And we've got a sign up sheet here for uh, to be able to receive those updates through our, about a monthly newsletter. So you can sign in there and um, we'll be looking forward to sending out those newsletters soon and, and updating the network with our census uh, campaign news. Great. Liza, thank you so much. I appreciate your jumping in with us. Everybody doesn't need to hear the same voice for an hour. It gets very boring. <laughs> so what I'd like to say, though, is one of the other things that I know it was announced on our census webinar uh, recently, we are going to be forming what is called the Complete Count Committee for Community Action. And we're going to be asking every agency to join us. We're going to be supplying resources to print using your agencies. It's not a program or a grant program. Melding it into the activities you're already doing. Helping us spread the word to hard to count folks in our community. That includes poor people, children, aging adults, people of color, uh, Asian Americans, Native Americans. Uh, this is an across the board problem. These groups are historically undercounted, which hurts our communities and it hurts community action. So we are engaged with this broader census, 20, census counts group and we are taking it on as our mandate just as these groups are to help mobilize our network. So please stay tuned. There will be lots of information coming your way, sessions at the national conference. Um, prizes, there will be prizes for those who join, uh, join the complete count committee. So thank you uh, for letting us do the quick census one. The Economic Mobility from Poverty Initiative is a project that we have been working on, assuming my computer wants to wake up. Or we have a dead link. Amy, can you all still see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Good. Energy Partnerships? All right, so here is information on the Weatherization Leverage Partnerships Project. Of course, there's a tremendous information out from NCAP, but we work closely with them in this arena um, to look at how this is and to have a great deal of information for you. Catherine Maddox is our staff contact for this. Again, lots of information. The Learning Communities Resource Center is, is of course, us, as I said, and it is a broad-ranging umbrella for helping us learn. Maybe it's as simple as that, helping our community move their, move their work forward. So we are actually not taking 2019 applications anymore. We have the groups formed, but we do have recorded webinars, which is why this is still up. And it talks about what is a learning community and what are the focus areas. The interesting thing for you all right now is that you have access to all of these materials that have come out of the learning communities, all informed by people working in the field. So these are not just, there are, is a lot of high level information on 
topics and discussions and information, but there's also all of them is, are field informed, working with agencies to see what works on the ground to make it simple. As many of you are aware, I've spent time in a local community action agency and I'm now back at the national office again. Um, and I will say that knowing that our toolkits are informed by people's experience on the ground makes them much more useful, I find, as resources um, to use in your agencies. Again, if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to type them in and Amy will relay them and we'll get them answered for you. The organizational standards is probably the page that many of you are most familiar with if you've had any um, engagement with those and having to report on those to your state offices, to your boards, to, to your other staff. So the Org Standards of Excellence, Center of Excellence, is the body that came together under funding from OCS. And you can see a timeline here of how the Org Standards came to be um, and what they are. And there are resources here to help you figure it out. The assessment tools to measure where you are. Center of Excellence developed organizational standards, toolkits to look at how to go. So the different standards, public and private agencies. And I see we have some of each on the webinar today. Information and guidance, tracking forms. And then for every category of the standards, there is actually a guide that talks, it's a toolkit, how to measure it, how to improve it. As long as you're improving it, how to take it from the next step to moving forward from good into even better or even into great. So there are nine distinct toolkits there um, for that. Then there is a series of beyond compliance. And you can access a full library of organizational standards. So there's a lot of information out here for you. It's been very carefully put together and curated. Hopefully it is helpful to you. If it is, we'd like to hear that. If it's less helpful, we'd like to hear why. We'd like to, we're always looking for ways to improve all of our products. And speaking of good to great, as many of you know, I used to help with the Pathways to Excellence program, so this is also near and dear to my heart. This is excellence for agencies. This is taking your journey. There's a short video here from UPO. Taking a journey over nine months from the standards to moving forward into excellence. You do a self-study with a peer group of other agencies and then peers from around the country, no one in your state, review it together with partnership staff and subject matter experts and give you a feedback report suggesting areas that they see that you might be able to improve the work that you do. So it is, it is an important process. It is one that does take time. You have to be willing to dedicate some time to it as well as some training. There are nine categories, or seven categories, I beg your pardon, which are comparable to the nine categories of the organizational standards. Okay. There is such a thing as a state-based pathways initiative where we work with a state association and orders to a state and then um, do it only within that state. So you have a peer group within your state to work with instead of a peer group. If open enrollment, they could be anywhere in the country. So that has always been a popular program as well. It's a relatively low cost to do this, except for the travel for the training, but the actual participation cost is quite reasonable to get an organizational self-study and a feedback report. So if people are on and have been through it or have questions about it, please feel free to type the uh, comments or questions in. Racial equity, I talked about briefly at the beginning when we looked over those nine program areas, but here is some information about the way that we approach racial equity work. The aim is to effectively eradicate the causes of conditions of poverty. We understand that racial inequality is right at the heart of that. Um, so looking at this, looking at racial healing, there were a number of webinars that were done last year in 2018. The work continues this year and will continue for the, for the future. Um, there will be more and more resources here, but I would encourage you to take a look at this lens for your own work and see how you can weave that into the work that you do at your agency. And then training and technical systems, which is, this is part of. There's ways to do this through management and operations and innovative practices. We like to think of it as a one-stop shop at the TA Resource Center where you can find tools on all these things. So I'm going to show you that here next, and then we'll go back to a brief presentation and open it up for Q&A. But we'd like you to, you can follow us. Our social media handles are at the bottom. 
And you can always, uh, if you want to request TNTA or a webinar, contact Gerald Crocker, who's jcrocker at communityactionpartnership.com, or just go back to that staff page and click on his name. All right, so tools and resources, which was actually the title of our webinar, but we want to move through um, all of it. We have, as you can see, a number of categories here. I'd like to start with the resource library. This is kind of your one-stop shop for click here. You can see here there are six sort of buckets that we put things in. One is the recorded webinars. We record all of the webinars we do, whether we stutter or do them perfectly, they're recorded and there for people to watch. Publications and toolkits, I'm going to click on it, but you will see, again, there's a wealth of resources across a broad number of topics. Online tools uh, is a special, special category of tools. They're actually interactive online tools, and we're going to go there in a moment. Then you can find resources by topic, looking at external resources, and then you can just see everything in the library. So these are just different ways, these bottom three, to access that. Now, if you can't find what you're looking for, Liza Porras or Zandy McKinley, right here are your contacts. Their names are hot linked to an email. So you can do a contact form. Except that doing that to show you just, I think, may have crashed it. Amy, can we see the webinar toolkit online tool page again? Yes. Awesome. All right, so looking at webinars is obviously the simplest. Find what you want to do, click on it, turn up your audio, sit back, have a cup of tea and a snack, and you can see it. They are typically done in reverse order so that the most recent are at the top. I spoke about that census webinar, count me in. All you have to do is click on these. You can share the links, watch them as many times as you want in your agency. Feel free to use them with your board. These kinds of tools are wonderful for board training. Um, you'll see some that are very specific to boards. You'll see some on every topic that is listed here in the sidebar. So your, our whole webinar list is to be found right here. But if we go back a step to our publications and toolkits, again, you see the most recent uploads show up first. You can sort by their title or their dates. You can search on any keyword that you like. This is the publication and toolkit, so that, that is already the resource type here, but you can also search by topic. Um, let's see everything that we have on Roma Next Gen or on pathways or on weatherization leveraging, trauma-informed approaches. Um, click that and go. Again, if you can't find what you're looking for, we invite you to contact. Uh, Lil, do you mind if I interrupt here just to um, uh, provide additional guidance? I do not. Please jump right in. I uh, just, uh, just wanted to let everyone know that um, we, we were excited to be able to transfer our resource library to um, this more searchable um, format that allows you to kind of hone down exactly what you're looking for. Um, and with the the platform that we're using, we do have these sort of three various ways to sort of hone in on what you're looking for, the keyword search, the type, and then the topics. However, um, the keyword function is not, um, it's not something that we build into the way that to our um, posting of the resources, but, um, and so it won't necessarily, won't, I wouldn't recommend that as your first okay. option for searching for a resource. I would go, I would, I would prioritize doing resource type and topic because that's, that's how we are categorizing them. Um, and in your search, if you're looking for something and you only type it into the keyword search, you might miss a resource that is posted but isn't um, captured with the keyword. So uh, we'll work on making sure that that's a little bit more straightforward. But um, for the time being, I, that's just a recommendation that, that I would offer. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, so resource library there. And then the other piece, though, that I want to show you is our online tools before we, um, before we end today. So there are several things, and I want to highlight these five. 
So the census hard to count 2020 interactive map. I'm not going to pull it up for you because if I do, we'll all get lost in the weeds and people will immediately want to see their community. It's an incredible tool from the City University of New York and it's an interactive way you can map it right down to census tract level information in your community and get um, the idea of who didn't respond well last time and who's hard to count in your community. So it's an excellent new tool. Our TNTA Resource Center is a resource for the whole network to find and locate an array of information. It's been around um, for several years. All the materials are co-posted there along with materials from other partners and, um, and looking at that. You, have to, you do have to do a lot, you do have to sign up to do it, but it's free and it just needs your, your uh, email and a password. Community Action Academy, I'm going to come back to because I want to take you there and take a quick look at that. The Risk Management Portal, I hope that most of you have taken advantage of it. Some of you may remember that there is an org standard about uh, doing a risk assessment for your agency. This is a comprehensive, free tool to you. Uh, done in partnership with the Nonprofit Risk Management Center under Melanie Herman's leadership, and it is still available for no cost to all agencies in the Community Action Network by virtue of our membership with the Nonprofit Risk Management Center. You click here, it takes a while. You go through different arenas. You answer fiscal questions, insurance questions. It is very much an in-depth tool, and it gives you back almost 100 pages of feedback on where you're doing well with risk management and where you need to focus some attention all based on your own answers to those questions. It is an incredibly important tool. It is comprehensive. If you have a different tool, your insurance agent might very well offer you one. That's terrific. By all means, use it. But if you don't have one already, this is definitely the place to go. Most of you or many of you who've been involved with community needs assessments have seen the community needs assessment tool done in partnership with a university in Missouri. And it has changed a little bit. It's now called a hub. It is still incredibly useful, although for those of us who've been using it for years, the, the change to the new format um, is a little interesting. But please make sure the people in your agencies who work on your community assessments have access to this tool. It, provides a wealth of data at their fingertips that they don't have to go to 17 other sources to find. The maps alone that you can download the pictures are, are well worth the time. And again, these are all free to you. All right, and then the last piece that I want to highlight for us today, I want to take us to the Community Action Academy. The Community Action Academy, um, for anybody who's done, done distance learning, is an online learning platform just like you would use in a college or a high school for that matter for distance learning. So you can log in. In this case, obviously, we're logging in as me. Amy, are you all able to see the Welcome to Community Action Academy screen? Yep, you're all set. Excellent. Live demos sometimes don't do exactly what you think they'll do. So here you'd see, as always, this is your welcome screen. So what you would see here, Looking at the main screen is you can access a dashboard of your own material, a calendar of site events, badges that you earn, and you can see all courses that are available throughout the platform. You can over here, you would see on the right hand side, my courses. So you can see that I'm in the results at the community level collective impact one. I'm able to see the learning community applications because I'm staffing these. Goal planning, because I need to be able to see people's goal plans and understanding community level work. So that's my particular courses. You can also see those over here on the left on your toolbar. Okay. So let's look for a moment at all courses. Let's show you the depth of what's available to you. So you can search courses, of course, by putting in anything you want. But you can also browse through the courses by clicking down on the arrows. The learning community has groups and application. This is where we actually run the learning community groups. And it switches to a drop down, and you can see all the different pieces. Let's look at what Roma training is available. There's a whole series of Roma Next Gen training, excellent for new people to your agency or for a refresher course done in partnership with Barbara Mooney. So creating a local theory of change, understanding community level work and data collection. These are courses that you go through and there's a 
different materials. Let's take you through a board one so you can show you um, one that you might use for your boards. Let's say that, like many agencies, you're walking your board through an introduction to Roma, and you want to look at what's in this course. You simply click on it. You enroll in it, self-enrollment student, and you just say, enroll me. There are a few things like the learning communities that are membership-based, and so you would need an enrollment key, having been accepted to that cohort. But most of the classes are, as you see here, self-enrollment. And once you enroll, look what happens. You can see the learning objectives. You can see who to contact if you have questions. There's a 25-minute video that can be viewed at a meeting, short enough to be used in a meeting on purpose or individually by board members. There's the slides separately. Then there's training facilitation materials to do this yourself at your agency, and then other resources that you would want to look at for that. This is true for all of those courses. So let's go back to home. Go back to all courses, and I just want to show some of the other ones that are here. So CCAP, you see that there's one on the practice exam and one on the examination. Again, these are courses, not just a video or just a webinar. They're actual designed courses. Pathways to Excellence, there's a course on the standards of excellence, a course on post-training resource library. There is a, a membership one for the January 2019 implementer cohort, people who are studying to become implementers. And then there's the pre-work that you have to do before you come to Pathways. Family development. Many, many of our agencies, of course, have um, family-centered coaching. There is a course for that. And last but definitely not least, there is actually a course on how to use. This platform is called Moodle. We call it the Community Action Academy, but it's built on the Moodle platform. And so this is learner orientation, which is the one you would want to do, version 3.5, on how to use this whole interface. Anytime you have a web connection, you can do this. So there's an eThink orientation that's for administrators. Um, so if you were thinking about using it for administration, you might want to do it if you were going to do your own um, partnership with them. But for the most part, you would just want this learner orientation. All right, with that, I'm going to take us back to the presentation. Let's see if I can do this correctly. I'm hoping that we are, in fact, on. Yes, we are um, recording this webinar. I see a question about having missed most of it. Yes, we will be posting the recording of it soon on the webinars page. So let me go down to the next slides. Oops. All right, hold on a second. So this is static, Liza. Uh, excuse me, Amy, are we back on the slides? Uh, yes, looks good. Wonderful. All right, so you saw this already. These are our static screenshots in case the live feed went down, which as we all know it sometimes does when you're in the middle of a presentation. So you saw the interactive tools, the TNTA Resource Center, the Community Needs Assessment Online Tool, and there's a link for that here. We showed you Moodle, the Community Action Academy. Again, I want to emphasize everything we've shown you is free. There are fees to do Pathways or to do CCAP or some of the implementation um, for Pathways, but all the resources that are on this website, all the toolkits, all the webinars, all the program pieces, these are all free to you and your agency. Uh, please make use of these. They were sort of developed by, for, and with you, and uh, we look forward to it. So another piece on Moodle that we want to emphasize is we now have there's an app for that. There's actually a mobile app that you can use on your phone. Um, download it. It's quick. It's Android or, or Apple, either one. And you can simply type Moodle to get the application. Um, at that point, it will ask which one it is. You can see the, uh, the uh, URL, moodle.communityactionpartnership.com. It's easy. Um, Using this, you have to register first, I should mention this, for the Community Action Academy on the website. And then once you're registered, you just enter your username and password here. Excuse me. And you will um, be able to see all of that content on your phone or your tablet or your Surface, whatever it is that you're using. Please feel free to use the app. We're all, as staff, finding it very useful to be able to monitor courses on the go. 
We'll look forward to your commentary on that. So these are the uh, some of the courses that I showed you in the Community Action Academy on Moodle. Webinar Wednesdays, we've just talked about. Of course, you're on one. And thank you all for staying with us um, today. I really appreciate the fact that uh, 54 agencies have taken the time out of their day to come and see what we have to offer. And we appreciate it. And we don't take you for granted. Um, so today is the fifth, of course. The twelfth is an introduction to social enterprise. You can see the others. You can always find us on the events and then click on the webinars. We're very easy to find. We try to make it simple. Again, we offer training and technical assistance in a number of ways across management and operations and in innovative practices. Um, if you need training specific uh, for the network, we can do webinars, workshops, one or two day person trainings, uh, in-person trainings. There are costs associated with some of those. Just get in touch with us and let us know what you need and we'll work it out with you. TNTA, contact uh, Jarl for the most part, Jarl Crocker or Courtney, but any one of us will get you to the right person. As you know, we are celebrating 55 years of community action this year, and we will be in Chicago for the annual convention in August. We hope that many of you will be able to join us there. Um, registration is open, and as always, hotels go, go fast. I know we're up well over 800 already. Um, so do get your registration in if you're hoping to join us there. I'm going to leave our contact information up. This is actually the end of the, of, the, of the webinar itself for content. But I would like to invite any comments or questions from any of you um, in the chat window. Is this um, helpful? Would you like us to do this kind of webinar on an ongoing basis every six months, say, or when we have lots of new things to showcase? Is it a good use of your time? What other topics would you like us to address on Webinar Wednesdays? Um, please feel free. I'll shush for a minute and watch the chat window and hope that uh, folks want to give us some feedback on what's useful. Because the last thing we want to do is offer things that you don't find especially useful. So like any evaluation, which we're not going to ask you to do, if you like it, we'd like to do more of it. If you don't like it, yeah, we'd like to do less of it. So with that, I'll see if anyone but me sees any other questions or comments. Okay. Helpful on a regular basis for new staff. Terrific. Well, this will be recorded and it'll be up on our website within the next couple of days. Um, and again, it'll be the same title that we had, uh, Partnership Resources. Please direct new staff to it. But if we can do it on a fairly regular basis, we'd be delighted to. It gives people the opportunity to have live Q&A. Excellent. Thank you. Someone saying they enjoyed the webinar, but we'll use the weekly function for events. Yeah, please do check back. We are consistently and pretty much constantly updating, um, updating our website. So for all of you who've been on today, we really appreciate your time and attention. Thank you for taking part in this with us. Um, again, a welcome to, to Amy Roberge, who is new on our team and is joining us in the learning community. That's her primary portfolio. Delighted to have you on board, and you'll be hearing from her on some of these in the near future as well. Liza, of course, and I, you hear from on a fairly regular basis. So with that, yours in community action, and thank you again for joining us today. Goodbye.